Hello, welcome to the weather update. It's 9.30 on March 19th, 2023, the last day of winter. Spring, astronomical spring that begins tomorrow. And you're looking at the uh, high-resolution satellite from today where it really looked like it was going to cloud up, but it never really did. We had like a little clouds in the sky, but it never really got any worse than that. Uh, you can see this is sort of like what it looked like in the afternoon. It had a few more clouds over New Jersey. But other than that, really um, not, not, that, not as many clouds as I thought today. Could have been a nice day to be in the pines, but unfortunately, I, it wasn't there. Uh, but uh, I did. Uh, well, I think I think we have better weather, perhaps tomorrow uh, for it. It was also very windy today too, so you know, yeah, a little blustery out there. Pretty chilly as well. Uh, quite a bit below normal. Uh, so let's go to the statistics for the day. All right, ice slip. And then we'll look at the weather map, but I'll just uh, show you the statistics. Show you that we were below normal, and if they ever load, that is. Nice if they loaded. All right, well, here we go again. Doesn't want to load. All right, so let's look at this other satellite loop here while we're waiting. Show you uh, what happened with the skies today. So you see, had these clouds threatening, but they never really made it. They made it a little over New Jersey, but really not too much over Long Island. It was really hard to predict what was going to happen with that. Um, you know, uh, this is what the sky looked like on Long Island in the uh, afternoon here. You can see we had a few of these little little clouds around. Uh, but other than that, it's pretty nice out. Uh, and uh, then later on this evening, that's what the sky looked like. Still a few little clouds. Yes, you're seeing pine trees there because that's Massapequa Lake. Um, so you can see there, that's the dusk. After the, Just after the sunset. Um, you know, nice, nice evening for a walk. Let's see, we're still not loading on the... All right, well, it would have been nice to actually have that loaded. Let's try that again. There we go. All right. Sometimes things just get stuck, you know? All right, so daily claim report. High was 42. So somebody was somebody I know was like, it's only going to be in the mid-30s today. And I'm like, nah, I think it's going to hit 40. It did. It hit 42. So we did make it above 40 today. Um, oh, that high was reached at 1225 in the morning, though. Okay, so we'll have to see what the daytime high was. Well, the normal high is 48. Low is 31, normal low 33, the average 30. So we're about three degrees below normal for the day. Not dramatically below normal, but below normal nonetheless. Um, and you can see precipitation. We're actually running above normal for the month uh, with precipitation. So, so looking at the weather map, we have high pressure in control. And uh, that high pressure will uh, keep us fair for the next few days. Um you can see in the south, they're dealing with the cold air, so you get the frost and freeze warning because they already, they're already they going to go below freezing tonight. Uh, in, it looks like a red flag warning there in uh, looks like Kansas and Nebraska. Not too much going on out west. Uh, looks like a few high wind warnings that are out, though. I do see a few for Southern California out. Uh, that red flag warning for New Jersey has expired. I don't think there were any big fires in New Jersey today. So currently, we are in the mid-30s. You can see Jersey is even colder it uh, looks like, once again, they're starting to get a little radiational cooling. I see a 27 over there in uh, in the Air Pine Barrens. Um, other than that, we have temperatures generally uh, ranging from 30 to 35, generally speaking. And we still got that west breeze. So I'll show you what the day was like at Islip. Um, and I think we'll have to see if it wound up hitting 40 during the day, we'll to see if it broke 40 during the day. This might eat my words. We'll have to see. If, <laughs> here we go again. I don't know. What is going on with the weather service tonight? Just can't seem to load these uh, these things up. It's being very, very slow. Very slow. So it's um, still not loading. All right. So let's look at the highs across the area today and the lows. Hopefully we'll be able to put ice slip up. So some some issue with the weather, sir. No, 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 no. We're not changing that. Uh, do it. Do high. Let's see if we can get this to load. Here we go again with this. So spinning circles here, folks. Mm. It's fine with my allergies. I got back in here. My allergies are killing me. Uh, all right, let's put on a highs. Let's put this to highs. All right, so the highs generally, all right, mid 40s, but these might have been the highs last night, recorded as of midnight. So we're gonna have to, 
That's why, we're, that's why I'm trying to get the actual observations for the sites. You can see we're having trouble pulling them up. Let's try this again. Let's, I'm going to put this again. See if maybe it'll work again. There we go. All right. So I don't know why it was doing that. So let's see what we were during the day today. Let's see. Did it actually break 40 at Islip? It did actually hit 40 at Islip. It did hit 40, but that's all it got up to. So normal daytime high would be around 47. So, yeah, quite a bit below normal for the day. And you can see here few clouds being reported at certain times. Uh, and you can see very gusty winds. So that wind chill definitely made it feel pretty chilly out there with that wind chill with those gusty uh, west northwest winds some gusts up to 30 miles an hour um, but uh, yeah that's pretty much what the day was like at Islip and I'm sure it was similar to that in New Jersey as well we can look at uh, let's see if we can get Lakehurst up here let's see how, how see if it was any warmer there today well, it probably was um, no about the same about the same no sky condition well there actually do report some sky conditions report you can see just scattered clouds not that many clouds today not like it what it looked like it was going to be. Um, you know, we had different models that disagreeing with each other. You know, you, you you see the line of clouds in the satellite, you think it's going to cloud up. It really didn't wind up clouding up. But anyway, uh, let's go now to the models, and we'll go ahead and we'll look at, uh, you see this big, beautiful, high-pressure system that's sitting over us right now, right? And that's going to give us nice weather for a while you can see yep there's another system getting ready to crash into the west coast as well uh so first we'll cover this week and then we'll go into the longer range here um generally speaking this high pressure is going to give us fair weather tomorrow it's going to give us fair weather keeps that storm offshore gives us fair weather on tuesday as well and wednesday we'll probably see more clouds uh and then there's a chance of some showers thir uh, overnight and and wednesday night and then this is what we may have to watch out for for Friday. Could be a soaker here. We'll have to see. This would be our next chance for wet weather with this next system. And then that goes up. Uh, and then we have a high pressure building behind it for next Sunday. All right. Um, so let's go a little further now. And uh, let's go to the North American view. And we'll look at the jet stream pattern that we have. I'm getting an air quality meter. So we're going to find out what kind of air, what the air quality is like in here. Because it seems, I think my apartment is making me sick. Because, like, when I'm outside, I don't have any of these symptoms. I don't have the allergies at all. Very rarely, very little bit compared to in here. Uh, so, anyway, um, getting back to this, you see there's our broad, like, broad trough. So, it keeps the dry air in place. You see a little break from the fire hose. But you can see there's another trough in the west there. That's going to cause a ridge in the east as we get toward the end of the week. And you see there's jet jet stream, that next storm system. That could bring in some warmth for us for the end of the week there. Uh, and you can see, um, again, another troughiness in the west there. Um, some troughiness in the east, too. So you can kind of have – it's not as much of a fire hose as it was before, and that's the good news of this jet stream pattern. You don't see a big fire hose for this at all. Um, shall we look at the European? I guess we shall. Uh, let's uh, – just the European, but I want to use the 12Z run because it goes out further. Let's see if there are any differences here uh, in this. Does the European look any different? And it does sort of look a little different as we get into next week a little bit. You can see it has next week has a, a zonal flow, whereas if we go to the GFS, um, you'd see that it's not as zonal. So um, if the European has its way, we're going to have crappy weather next week. If the GFS has its way, we'll have uh, some nicer weather. So we'll have to see which model is right, obviously, in the long range. So let's let's now look at the upper air, 500. And you can see there's that trough that we're in. Not particularly deep trough, but not particularly strong. But you can see how far south it goes. And that's why they have those frost and freeze warnings for the southeast there. Uh, and then um, you can see here there's that ridging that's going to develop as we get toward the end of the week, which is going to bring in the warmth. And then we have another little low coming in will bring us and then this is a really deep low that develops here this could be a big uh, cold air uh, here this could be a lot of cold air right here around March 29th very deep that could be a big uh, blast some cold polar air coming in um, and then after that we get the ridge building but still it has more or less it would indicate that would be below normal temperature so let's go look at the European which obviously has things differently and we'll again look at the 12z run of the European so looks pretty similar 
going out. You can see, but as we get to next week, you can see there's no big trough, and it's more of a flatter look, more of a zonal, uh, more of a zonal flow, so to speak. Uh, so the European would have us differently when it comes to our temperatures. So let me change the region to the CONUS view, and we will look at our actual temperatures here and temperature anomaly charts here uh, going through this week. Obviously, below normal tomorrow, we're going to be probably below close to normal, I think, by the afternoon. Uh, and then it will be going probably above normal on Tuesday. And then after that, we're going to be above normal for a number of days, well above normal for Thursday. Then it gets knocked down Friday. And you can see generally colder in the in the west. And you can see the European not as a, it keeps more of the cold air and the, the cold the coldness in the west. Now, if we look at the GFS, if we look at the GFS, oh, jumped a little too far ahead here. Um, you can see definitely well above normal Thursday, Friday. And then it drops off a little bit. Here's Sunday, so near normal. And you can see that cold air that's heading our way. And this looks like some really cold air. Whoops. Uh, here. Uh, you can see, look at that. Really cold for the middle of next week. Next Wednesday, very cold. If the GFS has its way, uh, it would be quite below normal that day. It might even be colder than it was today, uh, judging by the purples, which I didn't see. Uh, that's, that's quite chilly. All right. Um, so if we look at the actual surface here, our surface map, you can see a very strong low, a big high coming down from Canada. That would bring down this cold air. Um, if we look at the uh, European, which we'll go back to in a minute. First of all, we'll move this along so you can see that it looks fairly progressive. So let me move this back to the European here. All right, let me move this back to the European, which we know isn't going to go that far. So I've got to put this over here. The 12Z run. Now if we compare it to the European for next week, which doesn't go, it has a different look to it. It has the high kind of staying way up in Canada here, right? Whereas the GFS doesn't have that look at all, all right? However, we can change it to the 12Z run, which actually has the storm right over us as a, as a rainstorm, but it's still a very strong trough. So GFS definitely more amplified, uh, and that's that's going to be the difference come next week. Um, you know, we get, you know, obviously, it doesn't look like any snowstorms regardless, but we'll have to see. Obviously, I want the GFS to be right. Because we want some more cold air. <laughs> uh, you know, if we can keep the, the heat off for as long as possible, that would be fine by me. Um, so uh, let's now go to the local view, and we'll go look at the HRRR run. Um, and no precipitation to speak of as far as uh, the next couple of days, the next three days probably, no precipitation. It will be dry. So let's look at the dew points and wind flow here on the HRRR. We have enough of the zero Z in. So you can see we're in... I think the HRRR, I think it was not quite as dry as the HRRR was saying, two points in the single digits. We had two points in the teens. Tomorrow, the dry air stays in place, but it won't be quite as bone dry as today. It'll still be pretty low humidity, though, especially during the middle of the afternoon when we get a little more mixing. You can see the winds go from west to southwest, which means there'll be more of a sea breeze uh, tomorrow on the south shore, which uh, which would definitely, and perhaps most of Long Island, we'll have to see, keep tendency to keep Long Island cooler in the afternoon. Um, and then we don't have that much out for Tuesday. So here is the GFS here. I'm at the HRRR uh, looking tomorrow, and you'll see HRRR. You can see that difference in the temperatures. The yellow is over in Jersey, whereas Long Island is generally still green. So Jersey's probably going to get to the low 50s. Long Island's probably going to be uh, mid to upper 40s for highs. And as far as by morning goes, we'll probably have temperatures depending on radiational cooling. If we don't, then... The areas that don't get radiational cooling will probably be in the upper 20s, but if we do get radiational cooling, uh, teens are possible in the Pine Barrens. Uh, and then let's move this along now. And then we could have that radiational cooling again uh, overnight into Tuesday. So um, let's go look at the GFS, our dew points and wind flow here. So here's our dew points and wind flow on the GFS. And you will see here that we have, uh, again, uh, See that wet, you see how we get to Tuesday, still kind of a westerly flow, almost a little more westerly on Tuesday. So Tuesday will it probably end up being warmer uh, than Wednesday. And then we continue with the southwest flow uh, for almost a south-southwest flow for Wednesday. And then you'll see that moisture start coming in here for Thursday into Friday. And that's going to bring in the chance for the rain. Obviously, it looks like quite, uh, quite a bit of moisture there in the air. And then you'll see the front kind of gets hung up to the south on Saturday. 
uh, with the low going over with that low pressure passing by. And then as we get towards Sunday again, uh, we have the westerly winds take over with drier air. Now going into the next week, this is that this could be even a colder air mass than this one. Look at this. Uh, so this is pretty chilly right here. Uh, you can see two points below zero. Could it actually be Arctic air perhaps next Wednesday? We'll have to see. Uh, but, it, you know, this is what the GFS is saying anyway. Let's hope the GFS is right. So now we'll go and look at our actual air temperatures. I'll back this up to tomorrow. So looking at our actual air temperatures, you see, again, you see that um, not not quite as visible here. If you look at Ventu Sky, it's more evident, but you can see definitely a lot warmer on Tuesday with more of that westerly flow. Most areas of Long Island could get into the mid-50s. Uh, and then uh, for more of a sea breeze on Wednesday, which actually keeps Long Island a little cooler, probably around 50. Uh, and then we blaze on Thursday. Thursday is going to be brutal. Could be upper, could be mid, uh, mid to upper 60s, perhaps even 70, uh, depending on that wind direction. What's the wind direction? Yeah, we could have more of a westerly wind that day. So that could be kind of warm on, on Thursday, it looks like. And then as we head into Friday, uh, look at this. There's a big difference in temperature. It's It could get very warm in Jersey. We have to watch for the 70s likely in Jersey, 60s for Long Island. Uh, and again, that wind direction is going to say everything. If we get a sea breeze, then it won't be as bad. But if we don't, it could be absolutely brutal. Maybe record-breaking for a Friday there. That's really disgusting and should not be getting that warm in March. And then you can see sort of a backdoor cold front comes through for Saturday. It doesn't help New Jersey out, though. Still in the 70s, well, we'd be in the, around 50 degrees. Uh, and then finally, as we get towards Sunday, uh, you'll see the temperatures drop to seasonable levels, which at that, that time is going to be around 50 degrees for a high. Uh, but as we get toward that middle of next week, watching that plunge again uh, that we could get here, uh, yeah, we may not be at this. may be a day we don't make it out of the 30s next Wednesday, uh, the 29th. So, yeah, I really hope this verifies because that would really be nice. <laughs> One last blast of cold air. Uh, hopefully that day, <laughs> maybe I can get in the pines. I didn't make it there today. Uh, so let's go look at the clouds now. Obviously, the models were off with the clouds. This is the regular GFS. You see clear tomorrow. Uh, Tuesday, it, the GFS says it will also be clear. Uh, but Wednesday, we'll see more in the way of hot clouds. Clouds and the showers and chance for unsettled the latter part of the week uh, and then that's going to linger until we get towards sunday and then sunday it probably would clear out uh, going any farther beyond this as far as skies uh be highly uh inaccurate so i really i'm not going to do that right now uh so let's go to the um let's go to the r gem r gem let's go to the r gem look at that model for the sky so obviously tomorrow tomorrow should be clear not a cloud in the sky tomorrow tuesday a slight chance of high clouds very slight i think it'll be mostly clear um according to this model anyway we'll look at a few uh here i'll have to look at some soundings as well but i think i think it'll be we'll see more in the way of high clouds on wednesday this is what the rgm shows let's go to the nam next all right we don't have anything of the zero z nam and so let's go to the nam at Tomorrow, obviously clear. Um, Tuesday, NAM's showing a few more of them in the way of high clouds in the morning, but really not really showing much high cloudiness at all. Uh, very little bit, very little bit, uh, as you see right there. Quite a small amount, uh, so it could be most sunny. But however, one thing you have to keep in keep in. Let me take the sound in here. You'll see what I mean. Uh, they're pretty far apart, actually. It's more of a mid-level cloud than so anything I see. It's more of a mid-level than anything else. Those, yeah. So we'll have to see. Uh, but right now, it's looking like it's going to be uh, mostly sunny both days. Tuesday being the warmer of the two, so we'll have plenty of sunshine. A really nice pair of days coming up for sure. Um, let's now go to the Climate Prediction Center. Uh, we'll do that and uh, look at the six to ten day outlook here. It looks like it does have us in a sliver of above normal there with above normal precipitation. 8 to 14 day, near normal. The below normal stay pretty much in the west there. Um, and again, if we go to the, uh, go back to tropical tidbits here. And we'll go back to the conus view here. We'll take a look at the conus. And we'll just run this GFS here. 
this GFS here. And let me run this GFS into the uh, total accumulated precip just to give you an idea of where the precipitation is going to fall. And it looks like it's mainly going to be in the west. Nothing crazy out west, um, uh, but they'll still be getting a couple more storms. It looks like a lot in this area right here. Um, along, and that's going to be that event later this week that we will have to watch for. You can see it there. Uh, Friday, especially. But it looks like most of the rain would fall in uh, west of the Appalachians right now from that. Um, but that's going to be like kind of the front that's going to get hung up. But if you look again at the surface, um, you can see it's not tons and tons of storms. There's one storm there for the west. Um, and then there's a break. So it's not the fire hose that was going on before. And that's that's the important thing, uh, that the fire hose has been shut down. Though Again, the European is probably a little more as one. European still only has that one, only showing that one. So, again, not... Not as much of a fire hose as it was before. Um, you can also look at the GFS as far as... You know what we can do? We can do this. Um, let's go to... Yeah, this one. This diagram here. This kind of shows the humidity in the air. So you can see dry air in place. Uh, but you see as we get toward Wednesday... Uh, it actually is showing some moisture, so I'll have to see. That could be a mechanism for showers Wednesday night, then less on Thursday, and then a little more. You could see that humidity, and then dry air comes behind that storm system. I kind of wanted to use this parameter. It's kind of an interesting little parameter to use. I don't usually show it that much, uh, but it is it is interesting. Um, and then uh, let's let's just put this up here. Take a sounding see yeah there's a little bit of a, a mid-level a little bit but they're not exactly touching so it's not really like i said i think both days would be fairly sunny it is showing the close together at the higher levels perhaps over new jersey tuesday so we'll have to see i think if you want really perfect clear skies tomorrow is probably your day there'll probably have maybe a few high clouds tuesday uh but other than that like i said a great pair of days coming up uh obviously Monday, in my opinion, better because it's going to, the sky will probably have, you know, less cirrus around. You know, even if you don't have any cirrus, if you have a moist upper layer, you could have contrails in the sky. But also because it's cooler. It's going to be warm on Tuesday, uh, mid-50s. That's, that's above normal. You know, you know, it's, you know just the, that's why. Huh? Look, you want the warm weather? That's fine. All right. I want it to stay cool. All right. Soon enough, it'll be summer, and we're going to be sweating our brains out. And you know what? It can, it can wait. All right. It can wait. That's all I'm going to say. All right. I don't like the heat. All right. I don't like the heat. The heat makes me sick. I don't do well in it. That's why I don't want to live in this place over here. New Jersey. All right. Uh, but anyway, um, let's look at the Ventus sky. All right. I want to just show you this uh, temperature difference tomorrow. So this kind of shows the temperature difference pretty nicely. Three o'clock. You see Jersey, you're going to be in the 50s, low 50s. But if you're in Suffolk County, only mid 40s. So that's the difference here. And Nassau County, probably similar to Jersey. Um, you can see even a little sea breeze there. See how far it makes it in. But here's Tuesday. And you can see Tuesday, we're going to have more of that westerly flow. and There'll be less of a sea breeze. And you're 60 in Jersey, actually. So, yeah, Tuesday is going to be a lot warmer, as you can see the difference. Monday, Tuesday. So that's why Monday is the better day. Uh, and this, of course uses the icon model. This is, this, this is fueled by the icon model here. Uh, but if you look here on the clouds, here are the clouds, clear. Actually, this is the HRR uh, for 3 o'clock tomorrow. And then if we go look at Tuesday, also showing fairly clear at 1 o'clock. So, uh, so that's pretty much what I got for you tonight. Thank you for watching this weather update. Have a good night.